Hey guys, Akil Stokes here of Tier 1 Trading. Welcome back to another episode of The Trading Edge, your weekly outlook and review of the markets, or I guess preview of the markets. Today is gonna be part one of a two-part series we're gonna do here on making daily predictions. It's gonna be a little bit different than the videos that I typically do where um, we're kind of digging into my normal type of analysis, but I wanted to cover this topic because this is something that we discussed in the live trading room multiple times this week, and I thought it was very interesting for a handful of reasons. One is something that I personally do just to work on and find tool, tool and uh, develop my skill of trading, a practice I've been doing for years and years and years just because I'm a charting nerd and I like to spend a lot of time on the chart, but it's also something that a few of our traders brought up that they're working on to potentially become a strategy, something that they can do on a daily chart where they literally only have to look at the charts one time per day in order to get a trade signal. And that's cool because a lot of traders out there, you're still working your nine to five until you make that transition, if you're gonna make that transition at all. So having something that doesn't require a lot of chart time is, is something that is um, typically a, a pretty popular topic of interest. Now, before we get started, I do wanna say a big thank you. I don't say this enough, but I've been doing this video here each and every week on YouTube for almost 10 years now. And there are people that I know who have been with me from day one that still, after all of these years, leave a comment, say nice words, give feedback, um, provide their opinion on each and every video. And I just wanna say thank you because I, I don't do it enough. I, I go through the comments, I do respond, but a personal thank you to you guys, you know who you are, and for you guys that are sharing it and people coming on each and every week that are new, I hope you enjoy what we're doing here and I hope you become one of those regulars as well. Um, this video always has a special place in my heart because years back before I was in the coaching seat, um, I was a, a learning, aspiring trader just like you, and my mentor had a weekend video, and I would stay in front of my email and on, hit on in front of YouTube, hit and refresh every second, uh, every Sunday, waiting for it to upload, and it became really a, a stable of my, my trading week, where my trading week couldn't start until I saw that review video, till I got some ideas, till I got some motivation, or just kind of reinforcement of what I'm supposed to be doing. So it's, it's really kind of cool to be on the other side of that and just know that I'm providing value. Now, before we get into the charts and today's lesson, I wanna talk about something that I put on social media, and this will actually kinda of carry forward into the lesson as well. And I wanna bring it up because there was a lot of confusion from it, and I think that's normal. I kinda of thought that when I posted it, and I thought I might've cleared things up in the caption, but um, it's a very important issue, and I'll throw the infographic up in front of you, but it was an infographic from my buddy Michael Lamott at Mara Trading, or Mara Wealth, and basically, it was two characters, one saying, you know, I flipped six heads in a row. Hmm, well, my flips are trending. So, um, and then the other guy said, flip heads again, and I'll give you $100, but get tails, and you pay me $200. Deal? And it kind of goes off the whole kind of old thing, like, uh, you know, a coin flip is 50-50, so if you have proper risk management, meaning that when I win, you give me 200. If I lose, I give you 100 then that's kind of the, the general aspects of kind of what an edge looks like in the market or a type of edge. There are many different edges out there. And we got a, a lot of literal people, and I'm not upset with you because you should take it literally, that, that talked about, hey, I wouldn't take this deal because um, despite this trader or this person flipping head six times in a row, there's still a 50-50 chance on any given flip that the, the flip will be in my favor or against me. And that is 100% true. The point I wanted to make, and I wrote this in the caption, is that as traders, we want to think about the longer term game, right? So on any given flip, there's a 50-50 chance, right? We're not really going to exploit an edge on one opportunity or, or two opportunities, right? That's similar to doing some back testing and you finding the first trade that meets your rules and it works and all of a sudden you're like, boom, I got a strategy, right? The edge and the probabilities that we have in the market, they're, they're not really exploited until you look at the big picture. I'm, I'm talking weeks, months, years, I'm talking tens, hundreds of trades. And when you have consistency in that edge over a very long sample size, that's when you start to believe in it. So if we take this coin flip example, you know, would I bet a hundred dollars, you know, or you give me two hundred dollars, I give you one hundred dollars on any given coin flip? No, right? Because I don't think I have any edge in, in that opportunity. It's completely random. But if we said that, hey, 
I'll make this deal where you give me 200 if I win, I give you 100 if I lose, and we're gonna flip it a thousand times, then yes, I am gonna take that deal. Because although I might not win 50% of the time, the chances are that the heads and tails are gonna revert towards the mean. It's gonna be somewhere around that 50-50 level. I may be slightly lower, 40%, but the risk reward is in my favor, so I would still bring home money. I may be slightly larger. I may win 60% of the time, which just means I'm gonna make more money. And that is what a trading edge is. The, the point is, when you have an edge in the market, you want to think about that edge long term. We can't get caught up on emotions or feeling or, or placing judgment on any given trade. No singular trade matters. If you lose a trade, you're not a bad trader. You could have done everything right and it could have just lost. That's just the way it works, right? Um, what you wanna base your edge on and base your mindset off of is the bigger picture. And that's where that whole process over outcome comes into, um, comes into play. If I trust my edge, if I know my edge over the bigger picture, then my job is to simply put myself in a position where I can exploit it. So I want to consistently take whatever I'm supposed to take over and over and over again with trust that in the long term, in the long run, that edge is going to work its way out back to my favor. I, I may start bad and, and end well. I may start well and end bad, but that edge should come closer to whatever our prediction is. And I think while we're on the topic, it's important to understand that an edge, when I say edge, it's a combination of win percentage and risk management, right? There's a little a graphic that kind of makes sense of uh, kind of where the two lie in, in comparison. But understand, you don't have to be a 50, if you're a 50% trader with a average risk reward slightly above one to one, um, not counting spreads and commissions on that stuff, you will be profitable, but only by a little bit. If you are a 50% trader with a an average risk reward that is well above one to one, you can win 50% of the time and be super profitable. But you can also be a 90% trader. If you have a poor risk reward, then you could be a 90% trader and lose money. You could be a 30% trader. If you have a great risk reward on average, you can make money. So it's not necessarily the risk reward. It's not necessarily the win percentage. It's where it falls on kind of that matrix that gives you your edge. And you only know that when you provide or when you, uh, when you do back testing. And this isn't the rant I planned on getting on, but you got it. You're welcome. Um, now let's talk a little bit about this daily prediction thing I told you about earlier. So what we're gonna do here today for our daily prediction is we're gonna look at the daily chart. We're gonna look at an individual candle. We're gonna break it down and we're gonna ask ourselves the question, based on what we're seeing on the price chart, based on what has happened, what do we predict the next session to look like? And um, if you guys are on the tier one platform, this is uh, perfect stuff to go back to that foundation one course where we talk about candlesticks and reading it, momentum, loss of momentum, high momentum, low momentum, finishing in the upper third, middle third, uh, lower third, all that fun stuff to kind of decipher what a candlestick is actually telling us rather than just looking at a red or a green candle. If you're not on the platform, Get on the platform, 14 day uh, trial, only costs you a dollar. Get on there and get some free education or education for a dollar, right? Whatever. Um, but also I'll try to see if there's a, a YouTube video up here explaining the concepts that I mean. I, I know I have a few free ones here talking about how to read a price chart from some of the past workshops we did. I'm not sure if it's breaking down a candlestick, um, but if it does, I'll, I'll put it in the description box below. But so for part one, which is today, we're just gonna talk about the candlestick. We're just gonna talk about making a prediction based on how we read and interpret the previous day's close this is the prediction that we're going to make when we come back next week in part two we're going to follow up on those predictions but we're going to talk about the other two elements that need to be in place um, to have a successful trading plan which is stops and targets right it's it's not just predicting which way the market is likely to go it's I predict the market to go this way and get to that point before going to that point, right? The, the second that point is your stop loss, the first that point is your target. I predict price action to go to my target before it hits my stops is a simpler way of putting it. But we'll save that for next week. So let's hop into the charts. Let's look at some daily candles. Let's break them down. Let's see if we can make some predictions. I would advise you guys to play along, right? Do this uh, practice maybe every day this week and just kind of keep a little notes on it. How many times were you right? Because when you do that, you're going to be able to understand your win percentage. And as I mentioned earlier, that's going to help with understanding how you can set up your edge. All right. Rambling for way too long. 
hit that like button, comment if you have any questions throughout the video, subscribe if you're new, and let's pop into the charts. All right, so the analysis portion of this week's video is gonna be pretty simple and pretty quick. And again, this type of exercise doesn't really take too long. Just to give you kind of some perspective, I just went through 45 pairs and uh, pairs, um, Bitcoin crosses, um, indexes, stuff like that. Um, and I only found about nine opportunities that um, really pop out to me on my radar. And the whole process really only took me about 10 minutes. So for someone that wants to kind of fine tune this skill, understand that it's not gonna take an hour of analysis a night. It's not gonna take probably even a half an hour of analysis a night. It can probably take 10 or 15 minutes to kind of spot what you're looking for, jot it down in an Excel spreadsheet and make that prediction. And that's that's what I want you guys to do this week, right? I want you to make a practice and I'm gonna do this this week as well and I'll share a few the results next week, but every day I'm going to look at through all the charts. I'm going to write down whatever pairs I want to make a prediction on based off the daily close, and then I'll keep track of how the next day candle is going to or how it played out. Now, understand this is only part of the prediction. Next week when we come back, we're going to talk about really the second part of prediction, which is stops and targets. Today, we're only looking at candlestick formation and, and kind of basing that prediction off the individual candlestick formation. So it's, it's kind of half of the equation, but I think it's important to split this up and not overwhelm you too much at first. So the first pair that stood out to me is going to be the dollar Canada. And you can see at the end of the day, end of the week, right, we finished with a very strong bullish candle. It's a very strong bullish candle because not only is it a high momentum candle, meaning it's a longer range, range candle, higher than the previous candle beforehand, but you can see there's a tail to the downside, which means price action tried to retrace throughout the session. And we did essentially close at the high of the day. Um, add to that the fact that this close also gave us a higher high, higher close than our previous high watermark right there, um, which allows me to make the prediction that price is likely to go higher in the future. So the prediction for here on Dollar Canada is going to be a bullish candle to come next or continued movement to the upside, I guess we can say. Aussie dollar, basically the same thing, but inverse. You can see again, big tail on the upper hand of this candle. This is a bearish candle. So the big tail to the upper part means that again, price tried to retrace. Um, we got pretty much about what, 786% of the previous day's range. Um, and then we ended with a very strong finish. We ended with a close right near the low. So a very strong finish there. Um, there's no real relevant structure to speak of. There's a little bit uh, lower at about 7220. That's the area that we're looking at on the lower time frames. So I do predict that we're likely to see a continued bearish move downward here on the Aussie dollar as we head into the new week. New Zealand dollar is going to be very similar to Aussie dollar. This one is an even uh, kind of an even bigger break of the previous candle or even bigger violation. Um, but same concept, right? A long range candle, not as long as the previous range, but long body on this candle close easily in the bottom third and not near any real relevant level of structure. So I see no reason we shouldn't see a continued move down here on the New Zealand dollar in the bearish direction. New Zealand yen is gonna be next. And again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but again, I told you this was pretty simple. This is just candlestick analysis. There's really only three things that can happen. We're gonna close in the upper third, the lower third, or the middle third. We're gonna have a strong candle, a weak candle, or a neutral candle. And when it comes to this specific, um, these specific types of predictions, I'm not looking at neutral candles. I'm not looking at weak candles. I'm only looking at strong candles, which are, is why these are all looking the same. Um, now, this one isn't as strong as the previous ones. You can see there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a longer tail on the downside, meaning that price did reach um, a lower level and then retrace a little bit to end the week. But overall, we did still have a strong bearish close. You can see the close is easily in the bottom third, and especially in comparison to the previous two candles, and that's what we want to pay attention to. The previous candle was a doji, which is an indecision bar, or a doji type of candle. Um, the other one was a pin bar type of candle, which was, you know, even though this candle is red right here, this is gonna be really a bullish candle for me. So we come off of a bullish candle, we come off of an indecision candle, we spike up, kind of continue that indecision, and we finally show some, I guess, authority, you can say, by having that lower, low, lower close to the downside and ending the week and ending the day with a bearish candle. So another bearish prediction, uh, move to the downside would be here on New Zealand yen. Dollar Swiss, this is one we were watching for all types of different reasons. You can see some of the notes on the charts here, but, um, we have an inverted head and shoulders. We just broke out of the neckline, but 
that analysis could be used in this as well, but just off of pure candlestick analysis, a very strong bullish candle. Again, very minimum wick to the upside, right? A close basically at the highs, um, not a very large retracement from the previous day's candle as well. No really relevant level of structure that says we should be holding soon. I would predict a continued move bullishly on the dollar Swiss. We do have a pattern formation setting up here. I guess we'll draw it on because we, we do talk about these from time to time. Going a little bit off topic. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but a, a Gartley pattern setting up here as well. You can see our fibs are already on there from the live room. X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D right here at a 127 and 786 for a potential bearish Gartley and a powerful level of structure looking left. But for today, let's just worry about that higher high higher close and a predictive continuation to the upside. So dollar index, similar situation here, extremely bullish candle to end the week, end the day. You can see no wick to the upside, which means we closed at the absolute highs. We did end up violating a previous level of structure as well, looking left. There's really no structure until we get higher around 93.60, so no reason not to assume a continuation upwards. And if you guys remember, if you've been watching this video each and every week, you're gonna remember that this was, dun da da dun da da dun da da that cipher pattern we had on our radar. So a very good reaction to that as well, taking down target ones and twos. Now, next we're gonna go to the S&P and, and I don't typically do these type of predictions with indices, um, mainly because I, I, I generally, at least the US ones, I have a, a general bullish bias. So I, I kind of have a different approach when it comes to it, but we'll add them to the mix just to play around. Again, I'm, I'll be tracking these all week. So it'll be interesting to see um, if the analysis ends up being the same here. but. Bullish candle here on, or excuse me, bearish candle here on the S&P. Same old story, violated a previous level of structure. No real relevant level of structure currently at the close. So I do think we can see some continued bearish movement to the downside um, before we, we find our next level of support. Same situation here with the Dow Jones. A um, little advanced pattern setting up as well. We can draw that on, but just barely a lower low, lower close. You can see after a lot of consolidation here on the Dow, right? Kind of, uh, what do you call these? Train tracks, I think they used to call them, where they, where they go up and down and up and down and up and down. Basically, this period of consolidation and we ended the week breaking out of it to the downside. Again, nothing but room and space and opportunity to the downside here for a continued move. So just based off the technicals here, I would anticipate a continued move down. Now, it's not a great break. I'd love to see a, a, a more... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not confirmed break, but uh, um, just a, 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 a bigger break, right? Typically when something breaks out, you wanna see it move largely and, and take those uh, take those stops out. Um, this one was a very small one. So um, you know that's something that we'll go in the notes and, and you can keep track of. But regardless, um, the expectation is a continued move lower. Oh yeah, I did say I would draw out the pattern for you guys. Sorry about that. Um, do, 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 swing low to swing high. Right, you can see we come to the 50% retracement. So this is gonna be our X to A, swing low to swing high, our A to B coming into that 50%, our B to C, and then our C to D would be expected to come right down to our 886 for a potential bearish bat. You guys know how I feel about, again, uh, specifically US uh, stock indexes, uh, indices, sorry. Um, this is a perfect move for a uh, continuation trade as well if you're looking to kind of hop on the trend here. Lastly, we're going to go to the Aussie S&P. Um, you can see notes on here for a, a bat pattern as well. It's another potential advanced bat pattern here. Um, same thing we do with the Dow. Um, we can just look for it as a continuation opportunity. But going back to our candlestick game that we're playing, the prediction game, this one is a good example of, again, breaking past a previous structure low. A little bit more of a, a, a bigger break. Again, not an extreme one, um, but compared to the, the last chart we looked at, where it was just kind of a... a minimal break. This one does kind of push through a little bit further. Again, strong bearish candle. I should sound like a record on repeat right now. My prediction is a continued move lower. So what I want you to do this week is just take some time and commit to making these predictions each and every day. Again, it doesn't take too long. Um, I looked, I, you know, my trading portfolio is only personally about nine pairs, but I went through about 45. And these are other pairs I look at in the live room or, or just in random conversation with traders. But it's a chance to develop your skill and fine tune your skill as a trader. And it's a chance to really get more experience in the market. So 
go through each and every day, create a spreadsheet. I'll, I'll make one for next week's video and just track how accurate your predictions are. Now, remember, this is only the first part of the story. So what we want to track is just the very next candle on the very next day. Did we go in my expected direction? Did we, you know, go bearish? Did we go bullish? You know, whatever it may be. Next week, we're going to start adding more to the equation where, you know, more of the the, the full trade is going to go in, uh, going to be included. So not only are we predicting a directional movement, but we're predicting that price is going to move in that direction to a certain location before it hits another location. So we're going to throw some stops and targets in there as well. And that's going to give us a clear idea of how good our predictions are. But first things first, handle the first steps, just reading a candlestick. Then we'll add kind of reading the, the overall structure of the market and being able to make proper predictions. And if it's something that feels comfortable, this could be something that you continue to test, that you continue to develop, and maybe it can end up being a strategy that you use outright in your own trade.